Professor Katerina Lorenz is Associate Professor in Classical Studies at Nottingham University. An archaeologist by training, her research interests include the ancient temple in Nemi, about 25 kilometres southeast of Rome. This was once a thriving sanctuary in a beautiful clearing next to a small lake, which came to be known as the Mirror of Diana. Now, many of the objects found at the site of the temple by British archaeologists are stored in the back rooms of Nottingham's Regional Museum. Katerina Lorenz showed us round and led us to view a model of a temple. This is the place where this uh, marvellous model is housed, a terracotta model of a, what we call a Tuscan temple. It's dated to the 4th or 3rd century BC, so it's a very early Republican piece, and it's dated because of um, stylistic similarities to other architectural terracottas, which we have, and it's quite big. It's about, I think, uh, one and a half metres in, in length and perhaps 50 uh, centimetres in height, so it's a very substantial piece. So what is this object? And what does it tell us about this class of temple? Our little temple here is, is a very unusual and interesting piece of evidence to understand better the architecture behind the Tuscan temple. But I think the most interesting element of, of this particular uh, temple model are the decorations of the, of the pediment area, the, the gable area. Um, and here we have uh, little antifixes showing figural uh, heads. And also we have uh, three plaques, reliefs, which, uh, which were put up uh, over the three main beams that uh, held, the, held the roof construction and they show us uh, figurative scenes as well and here in, in kind of miniature scale in, in, in this model. These figural decorations uh, on the, on the uh, Nottingham model is very difficult to, to make out what exactly is depicted. We have male and female figures. We don't really know what's going on. They might not look like much at the moment in the model because it's all, you only see that they are kind of clay-coloured. But um, in antiquity... Like the big temples, also this model was, was actually painted. So, so the figures and also other t bits and pieces of the decoration would actually really stand out because they would be in colour and would be very, very vivid and very vibrant. So why would anyone want to bring a model temple into a full-size temple? And what was its role in the rituals that happened there? The, the, the answer is we don't really know. It was probably not an architectural model for, for like a, an, an architecture competition for the, the building of the temple on the side. That's a modern concept. That wouldn't have been the case in antiquity. And the most straightforward idea people have come up with is that it was also a votive of some sort, something people um, dedicated to the sanctuary in order to, uh, to uh, get something from Diana or from the, the deities um, which were worshipped at, at the sanctuary. There's lots of detail in the model which doesn't really make sense in a votive or doesn't make too much sense in a votive. But I suppose you could argue that it's a religious object, so it has detail but doesn't necessarily have to have some, some sort of function. It's enough to have the detail to make it a powerful religious object. This miniature seems to represent a class of temple, Tuscan temples, that in many ways is a mystery to archaeologists. As the supporting columns were made of wood, which over time leaves virtually no traces to help us recreate its appearance. We only have the evidence of the shape of the foundations, plus whatever we can glean from broken fragments and scattered roof tiles. So could this model temple, this miniature, be an indirect source of evidence telling us about an actual temple that existed in the sanctuary of Diana? A temple of kind of similar shape could have been as part of the of the sanctuary, but unfortunately we don't have many archaeological finds to to document what exactly was was at the site. The archaeological context is that we we are dealing with something which is normally referred to as a terrace sanctuary. We have um, different terraces which uh, which are kind of staggered on top of each other, leading away from the um, the shore of the lake and up up the, the the slopes of this kind of volcanic crater. So the only thing we really have to go by is the architectural uh, decoration. Uh, which has been found in, in the sanctuary area, which indicate that there were different phases of, of, of temple building activity, or at least there must have been different buildings to take the, the terracotta decoration. And so it's, 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 it's a lot of guesswork to go into how to think about the architectural development of a temple in the sanctuary. But even in the face of extensive excavation, the Temple of Diana at Nemi still holds on to its secrets. So perhaps one great value of the miniature is that it can help to bring the temple to life. I suppose that the, the miniature might help us to understand 
some of the atmosphere, some of the vibes of this particular place with its kind of figural decoration, this, this continuous kind of confrontation with, with figures of myth and, and also with the religion behind the site. The, the miniature can also be used as a, as a little kind of gateway into, into getting an idea about these kind of religious spaces with the big porch, the, the big kind of entrance area, as it were, which lures people in. And then this kind of rather obscure kind of back part where people weren't necessarily allowed into and where all sorts of kind of interesting rituals probably took place. So this model may give us a window into the religious context of a place like Nemi. In the next section, we look at another object which may challenge our understanding of the goddess Diana herself. 